Hello there guys, it's Joey, and today we're going to be talking about wombs of our mothers. <laughs> Although it could be wounds of our mothers, but we're going to call it wombs of our mothers. <laughs> Lots of difficult language. Okay, so I've been looking forward to this video, and what kind of prompted this video is kind of twofold. So there was kind of spiritual work going on already in this vein, and then somebody asked for a set. A spell set for the store and it was very deep and very emotional and I will show all of that at the tail end of the video so if you want to see the products at the end of the video they will be there there are pictures on Instagram of three or four of them now um, I may put the smudge on there as well because I kind of love it I kind of love the whole thing but wombs of our mothers is about healing and ancestral healing, particularly with regards to the feminine side of what we are looking at with regards to ancestors and healing and healing work. I have said on a couple of videos now that most of the ancestors that have come forth to me to work with me have been women and uh, the the cave of the mothers and the mother's mothers and the grandmothers and the grandmother's mothers is a known thing. It is a um, expected hmm. I don't know if expected is the right word. It's often the case that people find that their mothers and the mother's lineage are the ones who are in the spirit realm reaching out to future generations and past generations and timey-wimey as we were talking about yesterday you know that time is not linear we we're talking about that in the live chat yesterday if you missed it uh, I don't feel that time is a straight line I feel we can reincarnate at different times along the, the line it we can go back and forward and all the rest of it and for me, when working with my ancestors, they have come forth so far as women. And when looking at this energy, this concept of wombs of our mothers, the idea behind this concept was the connective thread to our ancestors through our mothers, our mother's mothers, our grandmothers, our grandmother's mothers, etc. There is a connection of a wombs both fertile and barren, birth and death. We are all connected to our ancestors through wombs. We all grew in a womb. And we will all return to a womb, the womb of, of the earth, of the, of the grave of death, upon the expiration of this particular incarnation, this physical incarnation, but for most of us, we feel that this is just one blip of light in, in many. That there is reincarnations, and reincarnations is not a straight line, as we've been talking about. And I really liked this idea, this, this analysis, that we are all from a womb, and we all return to a womb. And there are artistic renditionings of this all over and um, there's one where there are two women um, in birthing pose and like people going between the two in terms of being born and then dying and walking back into the womb and that connectivity between wombs is something that I think is an absolutely potent powerful incredibly beautiful analysis of, of life and when we talk about wombs of our mothers, I think there is always this immediate hesitation with those who aren't female in this incarnation. And to the people who are not female in this incarnation, I will say the following. One, we all have masculine and feminine energies within us. There is no, in my mind, there is no like def definite, you are definitely only one thing. Um, we, we all have these masculine and, and feminine elements in us and largely conceptions of gender are 
formulated within lifetime by like cultural, social, accepted pressures, things of that nature. What feminine is and what masculine is is largely made up by human beings. Um, other than the difference at a biological level, which is the difference of a chromosome, it's we're all the same up until that tiny little point and then it's only like after that little point. The other thing about that is that uh, I, I was talking with Chris yesterday and we were saying how we felt that um, the reason you can be uh, and uh, like reincarnated but who are you working with in terms of ancestors is that we felt that the energy of a person is not just in this one place in that the energy reaches along roots of an ecosystem and that reaches into the past or into the future or into other realities or into other parallel universes even that we don't know about and we get so very 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 tunnel visioned about the world we live in that we don't consider that our energy might be beyond this one shell, it might be far reaching, it might be interconnected to different places, different times, different lives and if that's the case our energy may be touching all sorts of different lives which gender is interchangeable. <laughs> we may be masculine in one life, we may be feminine in one life and so on and so forth um, and presumably uh, the thing that makes most sense to me is that we would engage with all the different forms of expression and gender being a very simplistic expression of um, learning through life like what is it in this life to be masculine what is it in this life to be feminine um, does it matter and and then everything and everything in between and in terms of you know not in terms of in between um, gender although that is something else but all the many many lessons um, that are nothing to do with gender and so on and so forth and so because we have experiences in different life paths at some point we will all have been womb orientated and I don't feel that it makes much of a difference whether in this incarnation you are male or female I don't think it makes much of a difference in this incarnation whether you've had children or not I think these are all choices that we make on a level perhaps it's predestined perhaps it's not perhaps there's an element of predestiny and an element of choice um, who knows we have no way of knowing for definite so I think we have to get beyond the idea of saying well you can only talk about wombs of our mothers if you're a woman because I don't agree with that I think we can have to get beyond the idea of we can only talk about wombs of our mothers if we've had children ourselves um, and, and because we're trying to fit archetypes in boxes because of that and so that to me is a hindrance it's like getting caught up in the details and not looking at the things which matter within this topic and this topic wombs of the mothers is about the interconnectivity of wombs um, the place of roots the cave a place of ancestral healing holding space for loss death in particular um, loss or death within the womb so this little part of wombs of our mothers is what came um, as part of the request um, the, as the healing within oneself within one's life path particularly about loss around womb loss so um, loss of children uh, loss of fertility barrenness uh, death um, before physical life was birthed through in whatever form that might take. Um, there is an element of abortion here and uh, medical reasons and I am not going to be making a discussion around that subject. I know there's going to be people who are touchy about that subject but that's not what this video is going to be about because unfortunately that's something which gets ugly um, but it is a space of talking about things which often aren't talked about um, and, and miscarriage and, and things of that nature difficult situations um, around the womb that many women 
go through, or many of us know women who have gone through it, or many of us have had lives that have been touched by it in some way, um, of, of loss before life, um, before the completion, before birth. And when we think about wombs of our mothers being a space of physical birth into this world, as well as the, uh, the going back into the womb of the mother earth, um, in terms of death, the, the interconnectedness, the symmetry, if you like, between the two um, is like a close bond, a knitted bond between these two energies. And so, in a way, when children are born, there is a death occurring. A death of the life in the womb, and then the beginning of a life outside of the womb. And I've talked in the past that I think I think Chris shared it, and it was um, two babies um, talking about, like, do you believe in life after birth? And it's kind of a nice analogy that uh, from in that in protected space, in that protected womb space, um, the birthing process is quite dramatic uh, for both mother and child in a lot of cases. Some are easier births than others, um, but regardless, birth is a process of difficulty. And I was talking about this on the blog space in terms of birth, in terms of a spiritual uh, process, a, a spiritual analysis, a spiritual parallel of birthing and birthing pains. And birthing pains within spiritual uh, discussions, if you like, is much more of a the birthing of something other than a baby into the world. And that can be just as painful, just as brutal, um, just as agonising, just as uh, full of blood, pain and, and suffering in a lot of cases. Because human beings and change don't come easy. Um, none of the human condition is not uh, hardwired in a lot of ways to enjoy change. Some people are better at it than others, admittedly. I am not. I am no good at change. I am resistant to it. It is an earth sign with an earth sign with an earth sign in the moon. Um, and I don't enjoy change or birthing pains whatsoever. Plus a whole life um, that has, has gone towards change has never come for a good reason. I can't think of any instance where change has come for a good reason. So I have a, a, he a wound there with regards to uh, healing that birthing um, and that means looking at the pain and the wounds that exist within me that I associate therefore with that birthing process, that first birthing process, because there are many when we talk about wombs of our mothers. So the birthing process within spirituality is a very frightening one. It's a very difficult one. It's, it's a place of often great loss. I'm going to hold on a second. If that beeping carries on, I may have to stop. No, okay. Um, car alarm, apologies. So, wombs and birthing and birthing pains within spirituality and within our lives, our everyday lives, our psychology, <sighs> is something that people don't really talk about in terms of how difficult it can be. We talk about new beginnings and in terms of, you know, optimism and the joy that comes with it. And uh, I talked in the blog about um, how we forget a lot of the difficult parts. Um, and I drew on the Doctor Who quote, which I thought was really wonderful, um, about the human superpower is forgetting. Otherwise, we, you would stop having babies and you'd stop having wars um, because you would be remembering all of that pain and you wouldn't partake in it. And you just focus on, you know, the uh, sweetness rather than all the difficulty. And in some ways that's a, a lovely superpower and in some ways it's not so great as all things uh, balance. So, I wanted to talk about um, the connective thread back to the wombs of our mothers in terms of uh, life changes. So, in, when we're looking at uh, looking at new processes of life, decisions that have to be made, um, healing within our ancestor rifts that, you know, when we have 
a gap, a space between us and our ancestors and we're not listening fully to our ancestors in terms of new beginnings. We can often feel completely and utterly isolated and I'm going, it's from a place of huge experience, you know, this is very deeply personal to me in that uh, I don't feel that I have a physical family backing me up in any choices that I make so any stark scary life changes are all by myself and there is an element of um, terror that comes into that with me because that birthing process, that moment of birthing anything brand new is all on me, the responsibility is all on me, uh, the crushing weight is all on me, if it completely get, fails up it's all on me because I have no net, no human physical backup net. But if I get beyond the idea of just the physical family then I realise that I have a spiritual ancestry waiting for me and more than capable and more than willing to offer advice at least and listen. And sometimes I think uh, the process of womb magic, if you like, um, can be a place of safety and a place of being heard and having as needs met, very much like when the baby's in the physical womb in before birth that all of the needs are met, there is a closeness, there's a symbiosis, there is a... it's like symbiosis is like the power word of the week for me I think, but um, there is an interconnectedness between mother and child uh, in a very physical sense before birth or children and that link is tangible and when we talk about it in terms of spiritual birthing then we realise there is a spiritual tangible connection it's just that it's outside of normal perception, it's outside of normal parameters. It's there if we learn to listen to the instinct, to the intuition, to the messages through dreaming and meditation and so on and so forth. Things that many of us um, sometimes dismiss because the world has told us we ought to. So then we move on to the idea of uh, the cave and the ancestral he healing um, within life. So the ancestral womb within life is often visiting caves and we can physically visit caves which if you can do by the way absolutely 100% do it because caves are some of the most spiritual evocative places on earth. I mean I know I've got a heck of a lot of earth sign, more fire sign but so but caves, man, I mean I have memories and memories and memories of visiting caves. I have a vivid vivid memories of Merlin's cave in Tintagel. It's, Tintagel is possibly my favourite place in the UK um, and it's possibly my favourite place I've visited so far and it's just otherworldly and uh, there's been some pictures that I've seen of um, the glowworm caves and things like that and it's just majesty and, and it's something other and mm, beautiful. And in the Celtic tradition, for my tradition for example, um, the place of caves are very much associated with the other world, which is kind of what we've been talking about, and not kind of, is what we've been talking about. Particularly caves with water running through them were noted as entrances to the other world, so the spaces of uh, places where you could enter the other world and speak to the gods or the fae depending on how far along the line you were I guess because the gods kind of got down demoted into fae later on in the uh, by the Christians by the monks so going and reaching and delving into caves whether it be spiritually or physically or both because if you can do both um, I need to go visit caves now. <laughs> I have a cave yearning. Um, then that's a place that you can take yourself, a place of quiet, a place of interconnection. Um, go, tapping into these sacred caves, these sacred places of mothers, and that can be literally going down into the caves and sitting and listening to your ancestors or kind of setting up a safe cave space around oneself in, in order to engage with healing. And then we have uh, death, 
the cave, uh, the womb, the place of death. And we've been talking, uh, Chris and I, about Demeter a lot lately. And Demeter, Hades and Persephone have been coming up time and time and time and time and time again um, this year. And I've talked about how I feel like this year is an underworld year, very much so, and how Hades has been like around quite a lot. Um, not so much recently until like the stories of Demeter and Persephone have been coming up again. But recently the focus has been on the dark earth, the dark morning earth that is Demeter in her morning phase. And this is kind of perhaps one of these odd conversations because um, in terms of where the northern hemisphere is right now in terms of seasons, you think it would be, oh, spring has already come and gone, so Persephone would be this side up. Um, so Demeter is, you know okay and she's not mourning and she's not in her mourning phase and Chris and I were talking about the uh, energy exchange so that a little piece of death stayed with Demeter um, and that manifested in her mourning and so a little piece of life could go with Persephone and then that would walk into her rebirth element but when you think about um, the interconnectedness of wombs um, and Demeter being an earth goddess and all life being birthed from her womb and then it's very interesting in, in this kind of analysis of uh, the, the death of things being birthed through her womb as well and we return to the earth, we return to um, that state of that cave and that, that decomposition of body and self. And it's interesting in another perspective to consider the shell of oneself as one's cave and the soul is, is, is inside one's cave. Um, and that's an interesting sort of analysis of self which is irrespective, sorry, irregardless of gender. And so that's a nice way of, of kind of looking at wombs of our mothers. So the set itself, um, because of this energy of loss that was brought into it and healing through difficult loss, um, the idea of losing children or uh, and losing and miscarriage and abortion and, and losing uh, life within womb and, and, and even the notion of never having had children and feeling the mourning the loss of never having that experience in this particular lifetime um, was another facet of healing with wombs of our mothers and so uh, there is an interconnectedness to all women throughout uh, our ancestry because all women have learned elements of lessons to do with childbirth and that's why we're here because our mothers and our mothers and our mothers mothers um, and the interconnectedness by birth and by death are irrescapable facts of life if you like it's facts of life they go beyond facts though. I don't like the term fact. Fact is kind of like cold without any consideration of something more because I feel like life and death are present within one another. Very yin yang style. So when I was asked about this energy, about this healing space um, of dealing with these very difficult issues, it felt to me that one would entomb oneself with one's pain if one was not careful and to entomb is kind of the opposite of the womb so entombing is kind of like caging oneself in rather than returning to a state of womb and a state of vulnerability but safety and healing and I felt like the wombs of the mothers was those places in all forms of life, in all types of life, in beyond life and death and connecting to the ancestors and reaching out to those ancestors who can help us best and support us through those most difficult trying times in our lives because there is no one thing that I can say on a video or at all or any one thing that any person can say which will heal anybody's difficult pains and the, that sort of loss stays with people. It will always stay with people and so I'm not even going to sit here and pretend that I can give an easy answer or I can whip up um, a candle that will instantly heal 
any of that kind of trauma because I can't. It's a process and what I have created is items to support that process of healing, support that interconnectedness with uh, one's ancestors in order to feel surrounded and comforted and, and in a safe and sacred space um, in order to reach and be touched by and be held by family members and ancestors that can help and, and, and love and support. So I'm going to move on to the um, products now, so if you're not interested, that's what we're doing. And uh, what should we start with? Okay, so there are pillars. There are oh, going to be four. I'm on the third pillar. Um, come back, camera. Camera is like, my mama. So this is the pillars. <laughs> this is one of the pillars. Okay. The pillar is black for the cosmic dark, for the dark, dark earth, um, and we have earthy tones, mossy tones, it's deep dark earth, it's Demeter. The pillars are very much about creating that cave space, that interconnectedness. It, that's basically what the entire set is about, is about creating that uh, connective thread to our ancestors, creating that cave, that that roots, that place of deep roots, and so on, and ancestral healing, yeah, and ancestral healing. Then we have the spell cauldron, come on, stop focusing on me, thank you. <laughs> the strange bird noises that are going on outside the window, I hope you can hear them all. I'm like giggling for no reason. <laughs> so the spell oil has been on video. Hopefully it will show up as colour. There we go. So it is a black spell oil with a green shimmer. All natural ingredients. All natural colours. No artificial So, this oil is very much about protection, reflection, introspection. This sounds like a life lesson, doesn't it? Protection, reflection, introspection. So there is a protective and defensive element. When we're in these spaces, we need to be protected. We need to put our barriers up. We need to be safe. We need to be safe in the deep places of the earth because that can be an overwhelming process. So there is an element of we need to be grounded and rooted to the earth, but we don't need to be buried by the earth. We need to uh, make sure that we are elevated enough that we're not getting dragged down into a pit of despair because we're dealing with very very difficult emotions um, and so this has that protective and deflective element that we're not going to be um, unable to come back from places of deep healing and it can also be used um, for when one is not in a safe space in order to heal oneself. So if you need to heal yourself from outside influences that are seeking to leech on to really difficult situations and energy, you know, you, you're going through trauma and outside influences are trying to leech on you and you don't feel you can defend yourself, bad boy will help you out. Then there is the uh, perfumed oil, which I really, really wanted to make um, because this is much more about the scent. Mm. Okay, how do we describe the roll on the scent? There's something of the wisdom of the grandmothers in this. It reminds me of the idea of being surrounded by herbs and spices with your grandmothers and your grandmothers teaching you um, magic and you're learning by scent and touch and taste and it's very tangible. It's a, a very physical experience of a spiritual experience. So it kind of ties the tangible earth energies in with the spirit realm energies. Mm. 
and it's an awareness, it's an awakening. A strength through information and knowledge and the passing down of information and knowledge through those roots which exist within the spiritual realm. Then we have the underworld salt. I hope you're going to be able to see this. Um, I'm going to do the up here and then I'll open it. So, and hopefully not spill it everywhere. So I hope you can, I'm going to show you in the lid because, uh, no, never mind, it's too light. Come on. You see there's a very, very gentle shimmer through. This is, hopefully you can see, actually, it looks quite black. It's actually a very, very, very dark green for underworld salts. All naturally dyed again. There's no artificial uh, nonsense in there. There's no, like, synthetic dye in there or anything like that. It's all natural herbs and, and such and so on. Yeah, I was, I was hoping I could just wiggle it about a bit and show you, but uh, no, you're not even going to focus now. Come on. Come on. Show the green. All right. Fine. <laughs> so the underworld salts are a beautiful, very, very dark green, very dark green um, salt, which is designed um, to be used in rituals and spell work to do with journeying to the underworld, to the other world. You can use it in a protective barrier sense, you can use it in a ritualistic creating sacred space to invite ancestors in mentality, so it's creating a, a barrier in which the underworld can be accessed and it is separate from the outside world, it creates that space. They are, there's something else, I've got a load downstairs because I wanted some, I was like, I need some of this for my ancestor work for science, because I like them. <laughs> but yeah, it's all about creating that barrier, stepping between worlds, uh, creating a, um, how would you, uh, a portal, a, a walk through, a doorway, a step over into the, into the realm of the other world. And last but not least is Temple of Wombs of Our Mothers, which is a smudge. There is a little white leaf on top, um, which is more of a decorative thing. Um, but I, I have started doing the, the like. For some reason, all of the death ones have to have like a little flower on top, and I think it's like the aesthetic of putting a flower on a grave. I think that's why I do it, but I've just felt called to do it every single time because there's this flowers of remembrance thing going on with other world smudges, and it may be because I have put flowers on graves, like forgotten graves, as part of my spiritual practice as long as I can remember and this was foreshadowing towards ancestor work because I had kind of forgotten who my ancestors were and I was already reaching out to the forgotten dead and I didn't realize within my own path walking that that's what I needed to do was just go beyond the uh, roadblock in my mind of I need to know who they are before I can work with them and it's like no you don't you already work with the forgotten dead you already honor those that you don't know so get over it kind of thing. Um, <laughs> so there was that, but uh, I think there is a uh, aesthetic in there to do with uh, placing flowers on graves and remembrance. So I'm going to just pop the flower off on the lid over there behind me. Oh, you can see it. That's good. There you go. It's down here. <laughs> so, side note, um, I, I found another one of these black glittery stars. I found one of these in with my clothing. And I was like, where on earth has this come from? I don't know. And I was like, maybe it's a sign. I found another one. It's over It's over there, the other one. Another one of these black glittery stars. And these are basically like, you know, Starry Eyed Supplies, goth, glittery black star. I'm like, there's some weird spirit activity going on. I'm being left black glittery stars. <laughs> 
Anyway. Oh, this might be my favourite. This might be my new favourite. Mm. It has that deep dark earth energy, that Demeter energy, that interconnectedness to a place of sacred cave and sacred spaces in the underworld. It reminds me very much of the underworld and a place of, of caves. It, it, it kind of it kind of almost smells like cave energy to me. Does that make sense? <laughs> like, I, know, I know what I mean. And it has this creation energy which creates this safe cave and this the cave of the grandmothers, the, cra the cave of the mothers and this interconnectedness in a place of earth, a place of roots. Um, it's like being surrounded by trees and earth and grass and caves, um, but it's not quite in the un in the other world, in the underworld though. It um, doesn't have to be in the other world necessarily, as much as the other world energy was. This um, has a much more groundedness, a much more rootedness, and it holds a place of ancestral healing and. and it has a deep earth rootedness in order to assist one with the pain of birthing in all forms and death in all forms. It creates a womb space. It helps us to connect to our ancestors, particularly through roots and healing. It also has that kind of feel that it creates a temple where your grandmothers and mothers mothers would all sit around and talk to you about lessons and talk to you about how to make something and how to create something and how to work through something. It is a informational knowledge bearing energy matrix so it allows the ancestors to hand down knowledge and, and hand down wisdom and it allows you to be open and receptive to the messages. So there you go. That is Wombs of Our Mothers, this set. Elements of the set. All of it. I don't know about the Spell Cauldron, but other than that, um, all of it will be available for individual purchase following, because I feel like um, this is a really important energy. And I've already sort of had people inquiring about what is going on with this energy. And the lady whose it is is fine, so she, she's a sweetheart. So that is it for Wombs of Our Mothers. I hope you enjoyed this video. Many blessings. <laughs>